Inquiring Minds. I am Steve Harper. And with me is my amazing co-host, Donna Carlin. Donna, how are you doing today? I'm doing really, really well. I'm, as always, looking forward to our conversation and putting you on the spot and all the, you know, the wild card questions I throw at you. I just love the fact that you rarely know what we're going to talk about, and I just throw it at you. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it, uh, yeah, I like to amuse you. <laughs> and apparently our audience. So I, I appreciate the opportunity. So what are we talking about today? So um, I've been doing a bunch of writing, as you probably know, I'm on book 10 right now. And um, it's about personal growth. Oof. And I wanted to talk to you about that because it looks different every single day. It's sure. not one day is not better than another. It's all part of a process. And, you know, people look at um, personal growth or trying to achieve mastery or whatever term you want to use as this incremental thing where every day I should be a bit better or by a certain period of time, I should have aced this and, and you know, I should know everything there is to know about X or be able to do X. Mm -hmm. And um, it doesn't work that way. No. Some days you're going to just catapult and the, the, the change is going to be dramatic and you're going to look back and go, whoa, was that an amazing day? And some days you might slip and you might say, you know, what am I doing? Like I was, I was doing so well and now I'm slipping. Personal growth is not, it's not a straight line. It's not a, like a, a straight way up. It's a zigzag mess that we all have to take you know consideration of and my question is how do you navigate that Ooh, i mean it's a it's a lofty question because i think for each of us that have been through this you know personal growth mindset right we you, know, you take a course or you go to a webinar or a seminar or a workshop and you know that somebody like you know tony robbins has this is the game plan. This is what you need to do. And if you just follow these 30 day prescriptive steps, you know, look how much greater your life is going to be. And like you say, that just rarely ever works. Right. And that's, that's why, you know, guys like him make a lot of money because, you know, Hey, I did, it didn't work. I didn't achieve it. Well, come back. We got other things that you yeah. have to do. I mean, it's a, I, I think it, it, it comes down to your stated goal. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? And it's kind of like, I, I look at personal growth as kind of like the journey. If you are moving from, you know, one coast to the other, how do you get there? And, you know, you can, can do things a whole bunch of different ways. You can take the fast routes, which, you know, are often, you know, sort of the answers to the tests that are prescribed by these gurus and these experts that, you know, have programs that will help you uh, get there faster. Or you take the backcountry roads, which is a lot slower and a lot less efficient, but uh, there's more experience and there's more things to, you know, to appreciate along the way, uh, more opportunities mm -hmm. for you to stop and smell the roses. And I think it comes down to personal growth is, is not a destination. It's a process. And I think at the end of the day, you rather than treat it from, Hey, I got to go from point A to point B, I've got to uh, live the experience in a way that's actually going to fulfill me and, and, and set me up for, personal satisfaction and what I describe as my own personal success. And that for me, I think is a really big factor. I mean, it's, it's good to have, you know, sort of test your metal opportunities along the way to see if you're on the right path and doing the right things, but nothing is an exact science. And I think that's where people get really upended on these things. They either get disappointed that they didn't stick out the plan for 30 days and they got off track. And so the plan doesn't work or they, you know, they paid all this money and it, it was a waste of time and energy, or they uh, get frustrated with themselves because it's like everything else they look at and think, well, you know, I'm, I'm inefficient in all these other areas of my life and my personal development is, is one of those. And, and now you feel just horrible about yourself in, 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 in general. And I think that we put too much emphasis on, you know, a result as opposed to a transformation and transformation changes, you know, based on where you are with your life, where you are with your career and really what you're putting in, in terms of effort every single day. And that comes in terms of 
your actions, but it also comes in terms of what we talk about on this program a lot, which is the questions you're asking yourself, how deep you're going in, what, you know, what does personal development mean to you? I mean, that, that phrase itself may mean one thing to Donna Carlin, but may mean something completely different to Steve Harper. And it is something to be, uh, you know, important for you to be able to dig in and say, what does it mean for you, whoever's listening or seeing or, or watching this program? You know, what does it mean for you? And what, what do you want that end result to look like? You know, and I just think there's no prescriptive formula for it that, you know, is 100% bulletproof. Well, let's look, go a little bit deeper. What is personal growth? Is personal growth achieving something is personal growth changing so that you um, approach things differently or can personal growth be just understanding yourself to such an extent that you know where your alignment is yeah. and it's not necessarily visible to the rest of the world you know I, I look at personal growth as I get older especially am I content and still curious still learning and still integrating that learning into every single day. It doesn't have to be work related, be personally related, it doesn't matter. And am I growing because I'm cutting myself some slack? Am I growing because I'm opening space up to read and to share and to have the important conversations? Doesn't mean I've achieved anything more. It does mean that I've grown to the point where I know my place in the world. So I'd be really interested in hearing how people view personal growth because, you know, most people think I'm growing because I'm learning, I'm achieving, I'm getting promoted, I'm getting a degree, I'm, you know, well on my way in life, I have my 2.5 kids, like all of that kind of stuff. And I'd love to know who comes up with those statistics, by the way, the 2.5 kind of thing. Um, <laughs> like a half of a kid? Not so sure. Maybe that's my dog. I don't know. I think that's but, Shadow. Um, yeah, I think so. Shadow. <laughs> um, you know, you look at, you look at this, this question, and I think the, like having the conversation with ourselves about what is personal growth is something that we would benefit in having to start off with. Well, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't fit into a box in my mind. You ask those three questions, right? And I'd say yes, yes, and yes, depending on your perspective and where, you know, an individual is coming from, right? You know, mm -hmm. personal growth could mean I'm feeling healthier. I'm feeling more committed to, you know, how I eat, the exercise I take, the, the approach that I'm taking to, you know, create a more um, vivacious lifestyle. Uh, mm -hmm. I could look at this from an education perspective. Am I putting new, great information in? Am I listening to podcasts? Am I reading books? Am I being inspired in ways that I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, I haven't done before? And, you know, really to a, a larger extent, am I growing as a person? Am I doing something? Maybe that's, you know, growing in my faith. Maybe that's growing in my relationships. Personal growth, I don't think, and that's that's kind of my problem with the whole personal growth industry is, that everybody tries to create it as a thing that fits in a box and the box is different for everybody. And I think what's really quite interesting about it, I, I just had this conversation yesterday with someone, an author of a best-selling book that I um, really, really love. And I don't necessarily want to, you know, throw her name out here necessarily because she didn't know I was going to talk about her on our show. But one of the things that she said is, you know, age and wisdom gave me a different perspective. I went through a divorce I realized that I had to be a good steward for my kid and I had to uh, also find myself along the way. And she said, I actually don't think my, and, and it's funny because we literally just talked about this topic, not necessarily in relation to kind of how you and I are talking about it, but in sort of how she got on the path that she's currently on. And it all came from her reignition of creativity and uh, curiosity. And she said, it would not have happened had I stayed in this relationship. It would not have happened if I continued to only define myself in the roles that life was sort of kind of thrusting on me. Mom, wife, uh, small business owner, and, you yeah. know, even to an extent, artist. You know, she's like, I, I, I love the term, but, you know, well, what kind of artist are you? A photographer? Are you a painter? Are you a sculptor? Are you, you know, everybody tries to categorize. And she said, what I... 
I recognized was I'm an experience artist. I love creating creativity. I love creating joyful moments. I loved tapping into these things. And she said, and where my fascination right now is, is in brain chemistry, where I'm getting my buzz, where Ooh. maybe alcohol had been it before, or, you know, you know, some sort of, you know, stimulant that I needed from outside of me to create this burst of, you know, you know, life for me in some capacity. Now that doesn't do it for me. Now, taking a walk in my neighborhood with my camera, seeing things that look ordinary, but making them extraordinary, finding those moments that bring me joy. She said, ultimately, I'm fascinated with learning the brain chemistry. I'm not a neuroscientist. I'm not, you know, didn't go to school for any of that, but I would not have even cared about brain chemistry at the age of 35. But now in my 40s, I'm fascinated by all of these tricks of the trade that you can use to make yourself happier, to make yourself, you know, appreciate the, you know, the current moment, to be present, to really uh, understand the, the, the power of boundaries, you know, being able to tell somebody, hey, we're set for lunch. When I made this, you know, appointment with you, I was totally enthusiastic and excited about it, but I got up today and I'm at a low energy level and I don't, I don't want to show up and just fake it. I want to be fully present. And so do you mind if we postpone? Do you mind if we reschedule? She said this freedom that she has found to actually take that control really came with the age and wisdom. And you look at all of the things that she threw out there, they're all elements of personal development. She's taking control of her health. She's taking control of how she, you know, what she puts into her, her mind. She's embracing things that she's like, you know, I wouldn't have asked that question or been curious about this before, but I am now. And she said, it's probably one of the most exciting times of, of that she can recall ever because um, she likened it actually. And I, I, I totally relate to this is like that first day of school when you show up and you have all these new subjects, you have all these new things and you don't know what's coming, but you know, things are coming. And some you like and some you don't, and some you wish you didn't have to take. But at the end of the day, there's this journey on each of these levels that is kind of being thrust upon you. And you can either regret it or you can be resentful of it or you can walk into it and embrace it. And I just loved how she approached it from that perspective. And, and having interviewed her a year earlier um, for my podcast, I see the difference in her. It was completely different um, in terms of her energy level, her level of enthusiasm, and just um, even actually just the nicety of how she came across, which just popped out of this Zoom in such a way that was so amazing. To me, that's what personal development is. And, and I think it's different for us in our teens. I think it's different for us in our 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever age you might be. But you sort of have to lean into it and you have to lean into it in a way that is right for you. And the only way you lean into it is to ask these questions, to have this conversation and to really fully embrace this as an opportunity to explore and have some fun with it. You know, we've talked in the past about, you know, don't compare yourself to anyone else. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday and were you a little bit better in some way, shape or form yeah. than you were yesterday. It's it's really interesting. I had a fabulous conversation with one of my clients who's a very senior leader in, in a corporation. And he went to talk to a group of people and they wanted to know what it was, the, what were the keys to him achieving this level of seniority in the organization and, and, you know, moving up in his career. And his answer was, was typical him. I, I so enjoy him. It was, I always took the jobs that nobody want, else wanted to do. Yep. And many, many a time I didn't want to do them either, but I knew that I could do it. I would do it. I would do it to the best of my ability. And then when I got things, you know, to a state that was, like stable, I would take the next next job that nobody wanted. And th that got me to the point where I started being able to pick and choose the jobs that I want. And I started laughing. I said, you know, you say that about me and, and my work over the years, because I've worked with him in a few different of those roles to you know get him to where he is right now. And he says, yep, yeah. I always tell people, you know, Donna, Donna won't necessarily work with you. She has to want to work with you. So, you know, meet with her and, and then see if she's willing to take you on. He's absolutely right. You know, in the olden days, so to speak, when I first started out, 
I took a lot of jobs, not because of scarcity. It was more because I knew that I would learn from every single person that I worked with and I would grow as a, as a coach and then eventually coaching psychologist as my education sort of caught up with my work. Um, and what was amazing for me was um, asking myself, what are the triggers for me? What, what enrages me? What engages me? And to be able to align myself with a style, my own methodology of coaching, yes, but align with the client in a way that was complementary, um, opposite, whatever it was, to bring the best out in them and me at the same time. Yeah. And that's the criteria I use now because you know people say you've been doing this work for 40 years. I have been doing this work for it'll be 41 years next month actually. And you know looking at that, how am I continuing to grow? Well, how I continue to grow is the world is growing around me. And you know we can't approach things in the way that we did 20, 30 years ago, especially with the av advent of artificial intelligence and all the other things that are coming and throwing monkey wrenches in people's lives and scaring them to death. How do you navigate that, which you don't even know what will be, right? So um, I find that you know that personal growth is being open to the uh, unexpected, number one. And as long as we stay in curiosity, we won't judge. We won't push back. We will seek to understand. When we seek to understand, even if it's one little bit of information, we have grown. Yep. If it's one little fact that we never knew before, we will have grown. Because, you know, the saying, think outside the box, one of my colleagues who's a futurist, hates that saying because you can't think <laughs> of the box that you have. So I say to him, okay, so let's reframe it. It's like t taking that new information, the new self-awareness, adding it to the box and our box expands. And we have a bigger box to, to draw from as we navigate life. So I think, you know, that's what it comes down to. What is the process that you're engaging with? What is it that you can do that you're constantly adding to your box and in some way, shape or form, and could be dramatic, could be like minuscule, grow in some way, shape or form today and then say, okay, what does that do to my life? Yeah. It would be the yeah. most trivial piece of information or profound thing that we learn and grow because of. Yeah. Leave yourself open to whatever it is. It's all part of the process. Yeah. And I, I think that's, you know, I mean, there, there's multiple ways that we could take this conversation. And I think at the end of the day, this is kind of a good place to stop because I would love to hear what our audience thinks about this because, I, you know, I, I personally, my perception of personal development might have been, you know, like you said, would be a vastly different 10 years ago, maybe even last year. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the fact that we look at it from this perspective and you kind of pull it out and kind of look at it and say, OK, well, I hadn't actually thought about it in that capacity. And I think a lot of times people think, you know, there's an end goal in mind. And if I didn't achieve it, then I didn't have it. Right. And right. it's not that it's actually the it's the life gumbo that makes the the richness of 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 what you experience and how you go through it and what you do. And that comes from all sorts of different capacities and all sorts of different inputs of which we hope that we are actually one of them. Right? <laughs> we're, we're getting these conversations on the table. We're getting them into, uh, you know, into conversation either with you and yourself in, internally or with you and your friends, your family, your, your, your team. So um, I would personally be curious to see how everybody perceives this topic and, and, yeah. and what else you would like us to cover on this topic, right? Because there are some other elements. This might have raised a whole bunch of questions for you out there. I don't know. So, uh, Donna, how can people get engaged with us in this uh, over this episode or any of the episodes that we've recorded? Join our Inquiring Minds uh, with Donna Carlin and Steve Harper on Facebook because that community is a great place for you to pose questions or you know share comments or your understanding of our shows um or start a conversation of your own that we could all engage in that'd be fantastic so that's the best place to go you could go to our youtube channel any of our podcasts 
um, where we really monitor the conversations is definitely on the Facebook group. So join the community and make yourself welcome. Yep, absolutely. Well, this has been a fun episode. Uh, you know, I, I love these topics. Uh, these just are kind of like the highlight of my day. So I'm so grateful that we get an opportunity to have these conversations and to do this show. And we will be back again very soon with another episode of Inquiring Minds. In fact, next week, because we do these weekly. Uh, but uh, until then, Donna, have a great rest of your day. You as well. 